Hey team, we're gonna learn how to manage SEO in a headless WordPress instance using Yoast SEO and WP GraphQL. I'm Colby Fayok. And if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. We're likely all pretty familiar about WordPress and the awesome things that it can help us do to manage our content. WP GraphQL takes this a step further and allows us to harness the abilities of GraphQL to query that data across multiple complex relationships throughout our WordPress instance. And while that alone gives us a lot of great things like querying our data so that we have access to all of our metadata from inside of WordPress, by default, WordPress alone doesn't really give us a ton to be able to customize our SEO experience. But that's where Yoast SEO comes into play, where it's a really popular plugin that gives us a lot of great options for customizing our SEO for every single page and every single post to exactly what we want. And we can easily add that by going to the plugins page, we can search for Yoast, and as soon as that comes up, we can see that it's the first result that we can install and we can also activate it right on our WordPress instance. The only issue is if we go back to graphical to query our data, we can't actually find any of that SEO data right inside of our query. To get around that though, we just have to install one additional plugin, which is an add-on that allows us to grab our Yoast SEO data right inside of WP GraphQL. So again, back inside of my plugins, I'm gonna search for Yoast WP GraphQL and I'm gonna be able to see that I can install that first result. And just like the Yoast SEO plugin, I'm going to activate that. But now back inside of my graphical query editor, I can go through and I can see that I now have an additional option with a field called SEO that has all my information inside of it, including my meta description, my title, and it even gives me a full head. And let's see what that query looks like where we can see my title, which is specific to that page, my slug and my URL. But we also have under that SEO field, we have a meta description, which because I haven't added one yet, it still shows blank. But we also have our specific title that is generated by Yoast SEO. And we even have this full head, which generates all the HTML instead of us having to manage it ourselves. We can see exactly how Yoast and this SEO plugin actually works by going down to Yoast on any of our blog post pages, where we now have these options available to us to edit all this information, such as if I wanted to add my meta description for this page, such as we want to create a headless WordPress blog. And I'm going to save that just so that we can have a test here to check this out. But now if I go back over to my graphical editor and I'm going to query for that same data, we can see that now inside of my SEO, I have that we want to create a new headless blog. Now this is really handy for us to be able to customize our SEO exactly how we want it, but how can we actually use that in practice with our project? To test this out, I created a really basic WP GraphQL Next.js starter where all that really comes with out of the box is the ability to create a new application with Apollo GraphQL that makes some simple queries both to the home page as well as a post page where we can see all of our posts. If you're already familiar with my next WordPress starter, this is a bit different where my next JS WordPress starter is meant to kind of serve as a theme like you would typically expect with WordPress, where it has features that are rich out of the box, just like a WordPress theme. Whereas this basic starter is really just going to be able to get us up and running so we can learn how to add this ourselves. So inside my terminal, I'm going to grab this command to create a new project. I'm going to paste it in. And it's going to start grabbing all the packages so that it can clone this template down and actually create a project for us. And I'm going to call it my WP SEO app, where now it's going to install all the dependencies. And that way we can CD into it. We can start up our local development server with Yarn Dev. And if we hit our browser, we can see that we're actually going to get an error. Before we actually have this working, we need to do one more thing, and that's creating an environment variable. Inside of my project, I'm gonna create a new file in the root called .env.local, which is the Next.js way to create an environment variable file. And back on the GitHub page, we can see that we need to copy and paste this environment variable into that file. And I'm gonna replace this host with my URL. Now, unless you have it configured otherwise, by default, our URL is gonna be our WordPress host. So in my instance, it's this IP here, where if I open up, up in a new tab and I go to slash GraphQL, we're going to actually see an error, but that means that it's working and we're actually seeing GraphQL do something in the background. So I'm going to take that URL, go back to my code editor, and I'm going to plug that in. And then I'm going to restart my development server, where now if I reload that page and let it load in the background, we can see that all my content from spacejelly.dev, which is the WordPress instance that I'm using, was pulled right into this starter. 
We can even see that this is the same content that if you go to the spacejelly.dev site, or if you're reading this on that site right now, it's the same exact content, it's just pulled into a different starter. Now, if we go into the code and open up source, pages, posts, and then the post slug page, we can scroll to the bottom of this and see that under get static props, we're currently making a query to our GraphQL data, where in particular, we're creating a query that allows us to query by an individual slug, which is our WordPress slug, and we're able to grab the ID, content, title, slug, and then also we can see we're querying for some general metadata, which is our title for the site, but we don't need to really worry about that for our instance, we would just really wanna focus on the post stuff. But what we're not seeing here is our SEO metadata. So just like we did in WordPress, we can grab this SEO snippet from our query, go back to our code editor, where we can paste that in right inside of this post query because it's querying the same content as the other posts that we were using inside of WordPress. But now let's see how that works by first saving it, but I'm gonna take this post variable and I'm gonna console log it out so we can see what that actually looks like when we open up our browser. And now if I go to our page and reload, I'm also gonna open up our term, our console, where if I expand this object, we now have that SEO object property available where we have that full head, we have our meta description and we have our title. So that means I can first destructure that SEO from our post and I can use our SEO dot title and I can also use our SEO dot description or meta description. Let's double check what that looks like. Meta D E S C. And once we save that and we reload the page, we can now look up the source. And if I look for description, we can see that now we see that custom uh, description that we added before for we want to create a headless WordPress blog. And just to prove that this is actually working the way that we're expecting it to, we can come here and instead of we want to create a headless WordPress blog, we can say with Yoast SEO and WP GraphQL. And if we update that, and now if we reload our page and we can even grab our source again and look for the description and get to the top, we can now see at the end of it, it says with Yoast SEO and WP GraphQL. Now, as I mentioned before, we also have access to a full head, which includes all the HTML that Yoast actually generates for us. And we can see what that looks like by copying that and pasting into our editor. I'm gonna change the language mode to HTML so we have our highlighting here. But we can see that we have our title, we have our description, and we also have a ton of open graph data, which we can do all that manually by hand. But we also have this option where we can use this fully constructed HTML right inside of our project. Now, before we get into this, the only caveat with that is if you look at these URLs, they're a little bit different than how we're currently constructing them inside of our application, where with our posts, we're going to this address slash posts slash our slug, where actually our host name is different from what the deployed instance will be. So we want to make sure that if we're using this particular option, that we're able to change our URL structures to match exactly how it is inside of our application. Otherwise, it might be smart to do them tag by tag, just like we just set up in this last step. But to see how this actually works in practice, we can take this HTML and string and turn it into something usable for inside of our React application. And to do that, we're going to use HTML React Parser, where if we look at this example here, we can pass in some HTML and it's going to turn it into a React component for us where we can use it right inside of our project. So I'm gonna grab this yarn command and I'm gonna open up my terminal for the cancel out of process. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna paste in that yarn command where it's gonna go ahead and install that package. But now I can spin back up my development server and back inside of my project, I'm gonna use this import statement where let's head over to our post page. And at the top, I'm gonna to also import parse from our HTML react parser. And now inside of here, we can say const Yoast head is equal to parse SEO full head. And now we can actually take this variable and we can insert it right inside of our head tags, which if you're not familiar with Next.js head, this is a component straight from the Next.js team where it's going to allow us to manage our metadata throughout all the different pages for the head of our actual website. So now if we come back here and we actually refresh the page, 
just like before we can open up our source and we can search for the things like our description where we can now see that it's showing that Yoast SEO title, it's showing the meta description, and let's see, it's also showing the canonical with that URL, which are in our instance, it's going to be wrong. So we wanna make sure we keep an eye out for that. But we have all that metadata straight from Yoast SEO, which will be helpful for us if we're trying to not have to worry about managing all those tags manually. But regardless, whether we wanna grab that excerpt with the full head, for our SEO, or if we want to instead select everything individually, which might be a little bit more flexible for adding all of our stuff, such as all this open graph information, we're going to be able to query all that data. We're going to be able to have the ability to customize that right inside of each of our pages and posts and really give as great of an SEO experience as we can so that we're optimizing for all of those search engines, including Google. SEO is a super important part of developing any website where you ultimately want to be able to have your site found by Google and have it appear exactly how you want. The great thing is just because you're using WordPress or a headless WordPress instance at that, we don't have to sacrifice that SEO by being able to take advantage of plugins like Yoast SEO and WP GraphQL, where we can really customize that experience while being able to leverage an awesome ability to manage that right inside of WordPress itself. What's your favorite WordPress plugin that works with headless WordPress? Let me know in the comments. If you want to skip all this and jump right into a full featured Next.js WordPress starter, you can head over to my starter on my GitHub at Next.js WordPress starter. If you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.